there. Oh, Samantha, you nearly knocked me down. Samantha, what do you say? Excuse me, Sister Jean. I'm sorry. Oh. Sister Alejandra, my doofy brother says girls can't do what boys can do because we're weak. Nonsense. You can do and be anything you want when you grow up, even president of our great country. Don't you forget that. I want to be like Father John and hold mass and serve bread and wine on communion when I grow up. Well, that would be wonderful. Or Samantha, you could be a sister like me and teach in a beautiful school or a big hospital. Or you can work with the poor, but you can never be a priest. Let's go, children. Let's go. Who the hell is Sasha? You heard me. Okay, so you're just gonna ignore me? Why are you searching through my phone? Do not answer my question with another question. You know, that's the kind of thing that makes me think I can't trust you. Do not flip this on me. Who is she? She's just some chick. I can't control who texts me. Some chick? Mm -hmm. Well, some chick said that y'all were gonna hang out tonight. Well, how's that possible if I'm gonna be with you? So why don't you go by? the sexiest little black dress you can find. You think you can buy me, don't you? It's working, isn't it? No. Kind of. Call me Heather, this is Tom. I know I'm called to die for people and to be your family. Call me Father, this is Charlie. I know I'm called to guide your people and to do your holy will. Good day, Father John. Sister Alejandra, we need to talk. Yes, Father. Once again, I have word that you're speaking with the young girls about women going into the priesthood. Father John. And worst of all, you yourself have applied to the seminary to study for the priesthood. Now, what kind of an example are you setting for these girls? Father, I want to do what you do. I wish to bring the word of Jesus Christ to his people. You already do. I do not, Father. You know I don't. In your own way, yes. It's not enough, Father. I pray and pray, and the message is the same. I believe in my heart that Jesus wants me to minister, that he wants me to become a priest. It is my calling. You know that the church will not allow women to become priests. There are so many things. Father, they are not. They will have to be. Why, Father? Why shouldn't a woman be allowed to become a priest? It is the law of the church. Now, look, we have had this discussion several times over the past year. You leave me no choice. You are no longer to work with the students. You are now assigned to assist with the shut-ins. Do you understand? Yes, Father, I understand. Have a blessed day, sister. but soon you'll have a new teacher and she'll help you learn amazing things. No, you are a teacher. We want you, Sister Alejandra. That won't be possible. Will we ever see you again? I promise you will be in my heart. I will keep it always. Thank you. Alejandra, I'm so sorry I've had to come to this. You just have to be so careful when going against church doctrine. What will you do now? Hey, Sasha, it's Tommy. Sorry I missed you last night. I got hung up at work. It's okay. So let's talk tonight. Yeah, I'll call you later. All right, bye.
Good morning, Mr. Riley. Good morning, darling. How are you this fine Monday? I am tired. How's your boys? You still giving you a hard time? Oh, you just discovered girls. Why don't you bring them in? I can have a talk. <laughs> oh, no, baby. <laughs> Listen, it was your mother's birthday. Mm -hmm. I sent her a gift from you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Hey, who's uh, Alejandro Batista? Oh, that's a matter sent over by Dunbar. Okay. Uh, Tommy, huh. call your mother. No. Take a seat. Put me on the Solis case. Sure, Gwen Solis, gender discrimination case, brilliant executive, denied promotions, paid less than a male counterpart. It's an open and shut trial, right? It's a statement case for other women bumping into the glass ceiling. No, of course, my heart really bleeds for Gwen, except when you get in front of a jury of eight men and they don't agree. Uh, set up a settlement conference. If we settle, we'll be leaving money on the table. Assuming we win in court, where the odds against the plaintiff are two to one. So there's a litigation risk, not to mention the reputation cost for the firm if we lose take the sure settlement. Tommy, you're not afraid of trials, are you? Hmm. What's our demand? 2.5. What are they? 750. What's it worth? 900. Settle it. Oh, Mr. Dunbar. Tommy. What's this new case you sent over? One of our biggest clients called in a favor for her housekeeper's daughter, Alejandra Batista. Pro bono? Does that matter? Her company bills five million a year. I'd mow her lawn every weekend if she asked. <laughs> Plus, the firm requires what? 75 pro bono hours? You've got three. Is that really the number you want to take to the partnership committee next month? No, sir. What's this about? Didn't Silk tell you? I was... Um... It's a case we don't want, but we can't duck. Just make it go away. What are we settling? Woman suing the Catholic Church. Hi, can I help you? Uh, Tommy Riley, can I get in your name? Ali Batista. Okay. Have a seat. Thank you. Is it Ali Batista here to see you? Yeah, thanks. Please, let me take this, sir. Don't let me down. Never do. So, Miss Batista is in the lobby. Would you meet her, please? <clears throat> Thank you, Betty. Miss Batista, right this way. All right, I'll tell you what. Why don't you put on that little dress that I just bought you? And when I pick you up, you can tell Daddy all about it. Uh, I need to call you back. Uh, Miss Batista, uh, please sit down. Can I get you some coffee, water? No, thank you. Uh, Silk, why don't you stay? So, Mrs. Batista. Um, it's Ms. Oh, sorry, Ms. Batista. Let me just say how truly sorry I am for everything that's happened to you. What are you talking about? I was informed that you're suing the Catholic Church, so I assume... I'm suing the Catholic Church because I want to become a Catholic priest. I see. Before we go any further down that road, uh, Ms. Batista, I apologize. I have to ask. Are you serious about this? You have an Irish name. Are you Catholic, Mr. Riley? I didn't have any choice in the matter. Are you a practicing Catholic? I was an altar boy. Ms. Batista, my religious practice is the least of your concern. You are suing the Catholic Church to become a priest. No, Mr. Riley. I want to sue the Catholic Church to allow me to enter the seminary so that I can become a priest. Ms. Batista. Call me Ali. You can't become a priest. Because I'm a woman? Last time I checked, there were laws in this country that prohibit discrimination based on gender. Yes, but... And is the Catholic Church an institution and governed by the laws of this country? Ah, uh, you're oversimplifying. Then how can the Church discriminate against me based solely on my gender? Are you sure you wouldn't rather become a lawyer instead of a priest? Don't patronize me, Mr. Riley. <laughs> Ms. Batista, I don't think God himself could help you become a priest. The only thing I don't have in way of qualifications is a penis. Why is that a fundamental requirement for the priesthood? I have no idea. All priests take a vow of celibacy. So what difference does it make what sex organ a priest has? <clears throat> Could you help me out here, Silk? We're supposed to avoid a lawsuit. Yeah, well, maybe we'll get lucky and the church will want to settle to avoid the notoriety. Unless they decide to let me study to become a priest, I have no intention of settling. We don't like to go to court unless we have a fighting chance to win. So. Why don't we take the weekend? 
We'll think about it. You can think about it, and we'll talk again on Monday. My mind won't change. If you won't represent me, then Mr. Dunbar will find someone who will. Okay. I understand. We'll be in touch. We'll do a little research, and I'll contact you within a week. Thank you for your time. I want to know everything about Miss Batista. Put together a memorandum about the viability of getting past motion to dismiss. You think there's something here? I don't know. Just doing my due diligence. Yes, Father John. Yes. Yes, thank you, sir. Alejandro, we have raised you to be a good Catholic. All of your life, you have made us proud. But this time, you have brought shame on the family with this silly priest thing. I... How can we go to Mass on Sunday now? Every time Father John sees us, he'll be thinking, oh, for Mr. Batista, you cannot control his family. You make me look weak. I... No, you don't speak. You must respect tradition. Say something! You just said oh, that. This is too much. Please! Oh. Oh, Tommy! Happy birthday. That dress makes you look even more beautiful than ever. Oh, Irish Blarney, just like your father. <laughs> oh. So how's what's her name? Who's what's her name? Oh, you're a bad boy. Maybe you'd be able to remember their names if they stuck around for more than two weeks. You're just like your father with that wandering eye. So what are you working on now? Actually, Dunbar dropped a pro bono case in my lap. It's about a young woman who wants to sue the Catholic Church to become a priest. You know, your, uh, your Aunt Dottie's hip is bothering her. And, and Rose as well, Rose. It's OK. You don't want to talk about it. I probably know your feelings anyway. She doesn't have that right. Mom, I don't want this case to go to trial any more than you do. But if I blow this, I won't make partner. Well, then you'll have to make partner at some other firm. Because if you take on this case and win, you, you'll change the religion I practiced all my life. That, that your father practiced. He didn't practice. Poor man never recovered from Vatican II. He never recovered from Irish whiskey. You want to have a real conversation? Let's have one. OK. What about the millions of Catholics who do practice? Do you really think you have the right to do this? We are a nation of laws. And no one, including the Catholic Church, gets to be above the law. Yeah, what about the laws of God, Tommy? Hmm? Where do they play in this? Tommy, please not do this. I'm sorry. It's your birthday. Tommy, if you force the Catholic Church to make a woman a priest, I don't know if I'll be able to forgive you. Actually, may need to make it an early night. Oh, why? I had a pretty crazy day at work. This woman wants to sue the Catholic Church. She wants to be a priest. I'm sorry. Maybe I'm just naive. But isn't the law pretty, um... Definitive? Definitive on the separation of church and state. I may not see it that way. And then there's always the Tommy way. Doesn't matter whose life you may ruin. Oh, come on. <laughs> Why don't you answer it? For what? Well, you don't have anything to hide. I don't have anything to prove either. It's just always going to be like this, isn't it? Like what? Like you can't commit to anyone. Oh, what? <laughs> you are so full of it. 
that all you ever think about? Hmm? Am I just some sex toy to you? Tommy Riley, the new Gloria Allred, champion of women's rights. No gloating. It's unseemly. Is she looking for a payday? I wish. I think the only way to win this is not to play. Silk, what'd you find out? Yeah, we filed to be a case of first impression, and no time has this cause of action been raised in state or federal court. Do we have jurisdiction? The short answer is yes. We've seen it in sex abuse cases, but never in ecclesiastical rules. Okay, do we have a case? We have the Civil Rights Act of 1964, which prohibits the discrimination of women for employment without good cause. Is a priest an employee? No, at best he's an independent contractor. Well, that's a problem. Yes and no. We're not only suing for her to become a priest, we're suing for her to have the right to enter the seminary to study for the priesthood. I think that's what we need to focus on. The seminarian is a student. It's only after ordination that he becomes a priest. We have case law expanding a woman's right to venues previously restricted to males. Like educational institutions. Now, that may get us past the motion to dismiss. If we can do that, we're before a jury. Tell me about Ms. Alejandra Batista. Age 28, born September 18, 1988, in Mexico. Immigrated to the U.S. in 96 with her family when her father got a job at the oil refinery. What else? I was able to interview several neighbors and sisters. Everyone thinks she's a saint. Where does she work? The Sisters of Blessed Charity. Of course. Uh, she brings food to the shut-ins, collects clothes for the poor. Any history with the bad boys? Nope. Girlfriends? No social life outside of church. Attends mass every day. I have my nerves do a run on the internet. And? No Facebook, Twitter, email accounts, no credit cards, traffic tickets, or debt. It's as if she doesn't exist. Social security number, date of birth, everything checks. I swear, Snow White. After all the wicked witches we handle, it'll be refreshing to represent Snow White. I need more information before we move. Move? More. Dunbar? I'm just doing my job, y'all. Oh, hey, I don't believe I've seen you in a while. I must be coming to Mass as you on officiating. Uh, you know, your father used to say that. I didn't believe him either. <laughs> you have a few minutes for me? Sure, sure, sure. What do you need? I thought you weren't supposed to smoke in front of your parishioners. Well, who says I'm smoking in front of a parishioner? I need some advice. Really? Well, not advice, more like some information. I was interested in the steps that you would need to take to become a priest. Forget it. You probably blew four rules today. <laughs> it's for a potential client. Ah, OK, well, um, well, the candidate has to be an unmarried male, baptized, and confirmed in the Catholic religion. That's it? Well, I qualify. Oh, not so fast. Then you next, next you need to speak with a priest in the parish. Mm -hmm. And if you have a good reputation, personal relationship with God, and dedicated to the church, he recommends you to the diocese. I just failed. Any tests? Well, since the Catholic scandals and all, the candidate must meet with psychiatrists and go through a battery of tests, yes. And all this is documented? Yes, and then submit it to the bishop. And he makes a decision? Yes. What about a case of a denial? What's the appeals process like? This isn't a court of law, dummy. <laughs> all right, let me make this as clear as I can. Say my client can pass all the tests, is devoted to helping people, has a deep personal relationship with God the whole nine yards. So what's the problem? No penis. What? My client's a woman. Please tell me we're not talking of a sister Alejandra. We are. Tommy, I'm going to tell you something. Now, I've known you since you were a young child. Things have always come easy for you. Sports, grades, women, money. Listen to me very carefully. You are not the one to take this on. My client came to me for help. I have an obligation. No one here cares about your obligations. You were toying with a way of life. Listen, if Jesus Christ wanted women to become priests, he would have made his apostles women. But he didn't. He had many candidates, his own mother, Mary, Mary Magdalene, but he chose not to. So you're saying the church's entire basis is that Jesus didn't appoint a woman as an apostle? And you're okay with that? When it comes to matters of faith and morals in the Catholic Church, absolutely. Look, I gotta go. Tell me, don't do this. Do you know why the Catholic Church forbids women priests? Here's a hint. 
There's no direct biblical reference for it. The scripture's silent on that. So it's all divine revelation. Their only justification is that Jesus didn't appoint women to be among the original apostles. No other reason. I go to war with that story. Will, will that overcome the religious liberty law? Jane? The act states that the government shall not substantially burden a person's exercise of religion, but it provides an exception if two conditions are both met. Such as anti-discrimination? Yes. And the second condition is that the rule must be the least restrictive way in which to further government interest. So this is a straight-up anti-discrimination civil rights case. You sound like a guy preparing for trial. If we can't scare the church into a settlement, we'd better be prepared to find them at court. Jane, draft a complaint. I want it out tomorrow. You know, does Dunbar know you want to file a lawsuit? They will soon enough. Tommy, you know what this can mean for us and your partnership. I said I might find you here, Monica Julian. As long as you can keep up. I might pull a hamstring. Filed a complaint this morning. Drew a favorable judge. Thank you. We need to prepare. We will. <laughs> but you were some important college football player. I was an unimportant football player. And you were valedictorian. An all-girls school. You're probably not impressed. I was 23rd in my class. Believe me, I'm impressed. 23rd? Mm-hmm. Maybe I should find a smarter lawyer. <laughs> she has a sense of humor. Do you think I'm some sort of humorless religious fanatic? No. I think you're a woman of impressive faith, Miss Batista. Allie. Call me Allie. One last chance, Allie. There's no shame in quitting. Save your mother, yourself, your friends, all the heartache that's coming your way. I'm not afraid. It's God's will. God's will. Yes? Colonel Sierra. Yes, I just got it. I agree. This is unique. Yes, I will have local counsel. Yes, I will be there as well. And can I just say that... Yeah, get over here right now. <clears throat> Sit over there. I think we have a strong case, sir. The Catholic business leaders who called to complain this morning just want this to go away. And if you recall, that's why I assigned this case to you. I appreciate that, sir. But our client, Ms. Batista, I don't think she'll settle. You're a settler. That's what I told you to do. But you also said that we owe a favor to one of our highest paying clients. I'm gonna catch 22, sir. You wanna make partner? Tommy, do you want to make partner? Then figure it out. And settle this. me for my disobedience. I'm a little shaken up, but I'll be all right. I'm gonna keep my mind and myself. It's not safe here, Ellie. We gotta get you out of here. So get a picture of that, send it to me. Yeah, it's Tommy. I may need your help.
Enrico. Your evidence. It is unfortunate that these events have occurred. Yes, I'm afraid so. So, what will we do about this? I have a pretrial conference before the judge. I also just found out that Miss Batista was attacked in the church. Is she all right? I don't know. But we will be blamed for this. They would betray us as the bad guys in any event. Just make sure this doesn't turn into a circus. I understand. I interviewed a half a dozen Catholic theologians who do not support the church's position on male-only priests. A couple of women even went to the Vatican and challenged some hope. Any candidates? They've all been defrocked over it. No Catholic scholars. Renzulli will just dismiss their views as rants of a rogue group. <sighs> then what do we present? I'm not sure yet. Talking settlement? Why not? I thought Dunbar was going to stab me with his pruning shears for filing the suit. <laughs> but unless the church backs down, I don't see how we settle. Got to try, right? If they don't back down, maybe we can meet Dunbar halfway. I know that I'm the last person in this firm he wants a trial. Tommy, Miss Batista isn't going to settle. I have to get to the courthouse. Mm -hmm. Go get him. Always do, partner. Hey, you mind checking on Nellie? See if she needs anything. Enrico Renzulli. Thomas Riley. Is your client here? Not until the trial. If there's a trial? Settling? All rise. Court is in session. The Honorable Judge Watford presiding. No talking. Anyone using any electronic devices will be escorted out. You may now be seated. We are here on the matter of Batista versus the Archdiocese of New Orleans and Bishop Cardinal Jose Sierra. Is plaintiff's counsel present? Thomas J. Riley, Law Offices of Finley and Dunbar. And defense counsel? For the Archdiocese and Cardinal Bishop Jose Sierra, Monsignor Enrico Renzulli, counsel, United States Conference of Catholic Bishops. Counsel, please approach the bench. Monsignor, I know you filed a motion to dismiss, and you've each requested oral argument. So before I render a decision, have you two had a chance to speak? No, Your Honor. Uh, Mr. Riley, due to the gravity of this case, may I make a suggestion? Yes, Your Honor. I'm going to reserve decision. I'd like to see you back in here on Friday. I would say you show the Monsignor some hospitality, see if we can't come to a resolution before we go any further. Counsel, step back. Defendant's motion to dismiss has been marked. Submit parties will be back in this courtroom on Friday. Looks like I'm buying. No need. I'm by the Cardinal's home for dinner this evening. Thanks for having me. Would you like a drink? Uh, it's been a rough day. That it has. So, how is your client holding up? She's strong, considering she was just attacked. You wouldn't know anything about that, would you? I'm not even going to dignify that with a response. How are your clients holding up? They're bent. I'm sure. Thomas, I'm glad the judge asked us to get together. I would like to work this out before it's too late. Too late for what? For you to turn back. Is that a threat? No. Then what is it? Advice. You see, Thomas, you can't win this case, and that's a fact. My client's commitment is unwavering. I hear you're allergic to the inside of a courtroom. You really should make this go away before you embarrass yourself. Well, if you're ready to remove the stained glass ceiling, then of course, we are open to a settlement. Not possible. Not now, not ever. Okay. I think we've established our initial positions. 
I'm surprised. Does Kent Dunbar agree that a settlement is impossible? Mr. Dunbar and I both agree that absent a better solution, this case should be settled by a jury of Miss Batista's peers. Even if you get past my motion to dismiss, she'd never be a priest, period. So my question is, why are you doing this? Because I believe she has a case. Are you a Catholic? I've been hearing that a lot lately. I was raised Catholic. Do you feel any conflict of interest in representing Miss Batista? I don't. I accept the teachings of Jesus as revealed in Scripture. That does not include the man-made rules of cardinals and popes. Have you ever heard the term cafeteria Catholic? A cafeteria Catholic picks and chooses what church teachings he accepts, but to be a Catholic, one must accept all the teachings. Okay, look. If Judge Watford sustains your motion and throws us out, that's it. If not, the media's gonna beat this to death, and I don't believe either of us want that. No, we don't. I put on two witnesses only. Ms. Batista plus Dr. Sylvia Turan. It's a psychologist appointed by the Archdiocese to screen potential seminarians. What do you expect of me? You put on Bishop Cardinal Sierra. You'll be relying solely on your cross-examination of Archbishop Sierra to prove that the church's position is unreasonable? That's right. Understand me. Yeah. Hello? Nikki, it's Tommy. I was I was just thinking about you. Wanna see what you're up to tonight? Why? Because I miss you, baby. <laughs> Cut the crap, Tommy. What do you want? I got a big day court Friday, and I wanted to see if you could be there for me. No. No, you don't need anybody, Tommy. That's your whole problem. I have to take this call. Can we talk later? No. Hello? Tommy. The press have found Allie. I'll be right there. Okay? I'm fine. Hey, you mind taking the bag of your car? Yeah. Are you absolutely sure that you want to continue down this path? There's no shame in settling. This kind of case brings the nuts out of hiding. I'm not afraid. And I told you I'm not settling. It's God's will. But we can't fault the guy for trying to protect you. Let's go. Jane, let us out right here. This case is an attack on religious freedom and on the more than one billion Catholics around the world. The church is confident that God's will shall prevail. Excuse me, why are you doing this? I think that's cool. Mr. Riley, do you think you really have a case? I'm not even gonna answer that. What's the matter? That's the, that's the guy from the picture. No, 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 no. that's the guy. Hey! 
excuse me, Sarah, can, can, excuse can, me. can you answer a few excuse more me. questions about the case, excuse please? Me. Council, please approach the bench. Did we work anything out? Okay, let's go. On the docket this morning is a hearing on a 12B6 motion to dismiss, filed by the defendants. Motion, uh, Monsignor, it's your motion. Your Honor, it is our position that the plaintiff is attempting to insert the government into the defendant's religious practices, which has no precedent in American law. Uh, even if the church's protection under the First Amendment would cause the infringement of the plaintiff's equal rights. Your Honor, enforcing her rights would infringe upon the Catholic Church's rights under the Constitution. Is it your opinion that the Civil Rights Act is unconstitutional? No, Your Honor, not the act. But the application of the act in this instance would be. Do you have anything else, Monsignor? No, Your Honor. Mr. Riley, it's your turn. Your Honor, there is no question that the Catholic Church is discriminating against women by allowing admission to a Catholic seminary to only, and I quote, unmarried males who have been baptized and confirmed in the Catholic faith. This is discrimination on its face. Well, maybe, but does the government have a right to get involved in their religion? Your Honor. Federal courts assume jurisdiction over the Church of the Latter-day Saints regarding their religious right to polygamy. The courts ruled that the civil laws against polygamy outweighed the Church's right to the practice under the First Amendment. There is no difference here. Are you finished, Mr. Riley? Yes, Your Honor. Our forefathers drafted some of the most poignant words when they said, all men are created equal. Unfortunately, they did not include men of color or women. But as times change, so must our interpretation of how those words were drafted. To do that, we look no further than the Civil Rights Act of 1964, which overturned our forefathers' original intent. So now the words, all men are created equal, includes all men. But that legislation also accomplished something else to include women. Since there is ample precedent to assume jurisdiction over the defendants and a fact question exists, I hereby deny the motion to dismiss. Quiet in the courtroom. I'm prepared to set this case for trial. Quiet in the courtroom. Keep it up and I'll put everybody out. Your Honor, we take exception as this is an issue of first impression. Exception noted. Mr. Riley, you recognize that this court will have the right to determine whether a mandatory injunction is justified, even if the jury determines that the defendant's actions are not justified? Yes, Your Honor. Then this case is set for trial 9 a.m. next Tuesday. Due to the novelty of the case and the disruption in the court today, these courtroom proceedings will be closed to the public. Excuse me, Mr. Dunbar, do you know how much time he wants? Please, please, sir, just a comment would be great. Do you have anything to say about your personal stance? What about Miss Batista? Great work, y'all. <laughs> great job. <laughs> a lot of hard work to do and a tough road ahead. But here's Thal. Sally. Yeah. I'm ready. Tommy, your mother's here. How dare you? In your whole life, you never made a commitment to any woman. Why now? Mrs. Riley, I'm Alejandra. If you're going to be mad at anyone, be mad at me. Mr. Riley's just doing his job. You have no right to do this. No disrespect, but I not only have the right, I have the obligation. <sighs> That is just the tip of the iceberg. Ms. Batista, excuse us, please. Mm -hmm. 
Our clients. Our paying clients are too frightened to come here because of the rowdy protesters. I thought you'd be pleased that we were set for a two-day trial. Two days more than I wanted. Clean this up. I didn't want to cause you any grief with your family. God's will, right? What the hell is this? What happened, Miha? I'm okay, Mama. No, you aren't. You had an accident. Mr. Riley, my daughter's life is in your hands. And you're doing a very lousy job protecting her. I know, sir. I've already got more security. You see what you've gotten yourself into, Alejandro. I'm sorry, Papa. Mr. Riley, you may call your first witness. I call Dr. Sylvia Turan. Your Honor, Dr. Turan is a licensed psychiatrist in the state of Louisiana. Defense counsel acknowledges that she is used by the diocese in interviewing applicants to the seminary. I respectfully request that she's entered in this court as an expert. Granted. Dr. Turan, would you please describe the process by which you examine applicants to the seminary? We're looking for two qualities, the absence of pathology and the presence of good mental health. We tried to do this in a face-to-face -face interview and by written examinations. Let's start with the interview first. What are some questions you ask? We ask about past sexual experiences, such as, when was the last time you had sex? Three years or more is the preferred answer. Last night, not so good. And what about some of the other examinations? Well, all candidates must take an HIV test and a number of written examinations. Based upon your interview and written examination of Alejandra Batista, did you form an opinion about her fitness to be an applicant to the seminary? Yes, I did. And what is that opinion, Dr. Turan? That she would be a tremendous candidate to the seminary. No further questions, Your Honor. Monsignor Rensuli. Dr. Turan, are you Catholic? Yes, I am. As a Catholic and a woman, what is your opinion on whether a woman should be a priest? I don't have an opinion. Surely in your work you've witnessed discrimination against women, is that true? Yes. Is the field in which you work dominated by men? Mostly, but it's getting better. As a woman who has succeeded in a field dominated by men, you're telling this jury there's not just a little part of you that wants this plaintiff to succeed in her quest to be a priest? Dr. Turan? I like to see women succeed, yes. No further questions, Your Honor. Mr. Riley, redirect. No, Your Honor. This court will adjourn for lunch until 2 p.m., at which time the plaintiff will call their next witness.
You know, I asked myself, what is the church's strategy here? I mean, hoping for a motion to dismiss obviously was not a strategy. We will win this case on merits. Juries often have a habit of interpreting merits in unexpected ways. But you agree the merits are on our side. I try never to think of merits. Only outcomes, costs, reputations. That way I'm rarely disappointed. Do you have a destination in mind? Where does the church want to go with this unnecessary exercise? And let's have no talk of winning and losing. The church will never let Miss Batiste to be a priest. Too bad, really. A highly qualified candidate. But she's not qualified. I must represent the church's doctrine. That's not what I'm really trying to get at. I was thinking more of a number with more than a handful of zeros. Possibly. What about the girl? Bigger obstacle. Perhaps not hopeless. If we're agreed, I'll inform Judge Watford of the possibility of a settlement. This court will adjourn until Monday morning at 9 a.m. Uh, Your Honor, may, may we know why? Uh, Your Honor, may... Where's Tommy? He'll follow up. Miss Batista, may I sit down? How have you been? Faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. I believe that's James chapter 2, verse 14. If you look in your heart, you'll appreciate all the wonderful things you can provide for those in need. But I could not be a priest. That's the one thing you have to give up. And if it makes a difference, I believe you can get several million. It's interesting that the church would be willing to spend millions of dollars that, as you suggest, could be spent helping others just to keep one woman out of the seminary. No, no, I'm not saying this offer is being made by the church. But let's say there are individuals interested in making this situation go away. We're going to settle. Renzulli's on board. I can't believe you went to Renzulli behind my back. Hmm. That's of no importance. What is important is that win or lose, Miss Batista is going to be a novelty the rest of her life. You want to help that girl, help her walk away with millions of dollars. She'll never go for it. You never know how someone will respond until you ask the right question. Talk to her. You disappoint me. What the hell happened to you? We don't deal in good guys and bad guys. She stuck to her guns. That happens to be worth a lot of money. Get it done. Or forget about being part. I don't care about the money. Really? <laughs> what about all the good that you could do with millions of dollars? Isn't that a little selfish? Maybe even a sin? 
That which God had made me do, had commanded or shall command, I will not fail to do for any man alive. You know, I never learned that one. Is it Matthew? No. It's from Joan of Arc to her interrogators. Is this about vanity? Are you bucking for sainthood? What do you believe in when you're alone in the quiet? Making partner? Then what? Dispiriting sex with the next random woman? If you take away faith, you take away the magic of life. I'd rather die than live that way. I believe in something. I believe in the law, which is why I took your case. Donbar shoved my case down your throat, hoping you'd settle it. We both know this case was never going to settle. But I'm here. Why? What do you believe in, Tommy? Maybe a little hard headed, but you're definitely not hard hearted. Over the hill, oh, I am homeward bound. Far from the trail, but I will clear new ground. Hello? Hey, Allie, it's me. Okay. Let's do this. So, this is Jean? Yes. Willis Tompkins. We spoke on the phone earlier. Yes. Please, come have a seat. I've been thinking about the sketch that you sent me, and I do think it's Mr. Vargas. What is his first name? Vic. Sister, please tell me everything you know about him. Well, he lives down the street. Where? The Quartermain Apartments on Poitras. He used to come to church regularly, but not anymore. He tried for the seminary, but wasn't accepted. He didn't handle it very well, you know. Mm -hmm. Thank you, sister. That was very helpful. Thank you. You're welcome, and God bless you. Are you the landlord here? Why? Is this where Vic Vargas lives? Who wants to know? I'm an investigative attorney. Is he here? I don't know if he's here or not. C can you give me a key to his room? No.
Second floor, last door on the left. Tommy. Look, I, I, yeah, got some great news. I could use that. Our guy, he lives across the street from the church. Yeah, one of the sisters recognized him. He's under our noses the whole time. I'm in his apartment right now. Hold on. This dude is full loco. Got all these face plastered all over his walls. Only one problem. He's in my head. Tomorrow morning. Hey, well, I'm about to call the cops. I'm just gonna stay here till they arrive. But it's, it's tons of stuff to sift through. Tell me. Be careful in the meantime. You're fired. Jane, take over, and let's get this settled. This case is bigger than you and me. I'd like to continue to represent Miss Batista by myself. If that's okay with you, Allie, I'd like to proceed. Oh, well, certainly. Mr. Dunbar, you're fired. Jane. Ms. Batista. Did you apply to the Archdiocese of New Orleans to attend the seminary? Yes, I did. Did they accept your application? They did not. Did they say why? I was told I didn't meet the basic qualifications for an applicant. What are the basic qualifications? An applicant must be a non-married male, baptized, and confirmed in the Catholic Church. Are you married, or have you ever been married? No. Are you a Catholic, baptized, and confirmed in the Catholic Church? Yes, I am. So the only reason your application to attend seminary was denied is because you were not male. Is that correct? Objection. Question calls for a conclusion of the witness not within her scope of knowledge. Sustained. Ms. Batista, could you tell the court why you want to be a priest? I believe it is my calling in life. Whenever I expressed that feeling, I was told, you can't be a priest, you're a girl. I never understood. I am caring and committed to the teachings of the Catholic Church. As I've grown older, that calling became stronger, and I know that I have the spirituality, the desire to help others, and the dedication to do God's work. Ms. Batista, do you honestly feel that God wants you to be a priest? Objection, Ms. Batista cannot possibly know what is in the mind of God. Overruled. Ms. Batista, you may answer the question. Yes, I firmly believe, as firmly as I believe in the Catholic faith, that this calling comes from God. No further questions, Your Honor. Monsignor Rensselaer. Miss Batista, if you are ordained as a priest, are you aware that you will take a vow to obey all of the teachings of the Catholic Church? I am aware of that vow. And are you aware that the church teaches that only males may be validly ordained as priests? Yes, Monsignor. Do you believe in the doctrine concerning the gender of priests? No, I do not. Then how can you, in all good conscience, take the vow to obey all the teachings of the church when you do not believe in the validity of one of the church's basic doctrines? Monsignor, if I am ordained as a priest, I would be both a woman and an ordained priest. 
That means the doctrine of male-only priests is no longer taught. I could readily take a vow to obey all church doctrines then. Ms. Batista, there's been a good bit of notoriety about your lawsuit, wouldn't you agree? Yes, I would. It might make one wonder how sincere you are about your desire to be a priest or whether you were just seeking publicity. Objection. Counsel isn't asking questions. He's lecturing the witness. Sustain, Monsignor Renzulli. Please uh, confine your examination to questions. You've testified that you've had the calling to be a priest since you were a child, and you feel that this calling is from God, correct? Yes. Why has it taken so long to apply? As you can see, Monsignor, this is a difficult process. I'm not a person who seeks media attention. Knowing what was coming, I prayed long and hard and looked into my heart to determine if, by God's grace, I could apply to the seminary. Do you believe that by challenging God's church, you were in His grace? If I'm not, may God put me there. And if I am, may God so keep me. Ms. Batista, are you aware that there are many Christian religions who would readily take someone who is as dedicated as you say you are to be a priest or a minister? Yes. Then why did you not apply to an Episcopal or another seminary instead of filing a lawsuit against the Catholic Church? Because I'm a Catholic, and I wish to become a Catholic priest. I'm about going to lose it if you know it's here, right? I've been up all night searching for all this place. I really could use your help on this one, brother. I got you. Anything for you, bro. Anything for Allie. Police, they found something. I'm heading back there. Hey, can you tell me? I don't want that. Take the gun, Tommy. responded to you. They may not understand the faith, but they appreciate your passion for it. Thank you. I mean it. Do you really think I can convince people who don't share my faith of what it means to me? You convince me? What did you guys find? We gotta go. Come on. Hey, Silk. Tommy, he knows where she is. You gotta get out of there. I'm on my way. Get out of there now. We gotta get you out of here. Marcus knows where you are.
in the wicked advance against me. Stay right there. It will be my enemies and foes. Tommy, who please don't shoot it. Those who will Tommy, stumble please, and fall. Don't shoot it. get the hell out of here. Only no. Don't leave him alive. Pain. 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 You must repent. I will work for you until you renounce your sins and thank God for his forgiveness. It's gonna be all right. No, it's not ever gonna be all right. We shouldn't be doing this. Maybe this is my punishment for going against the church. Maybe this is God's will. No, Ali, this is not God's will. This is the work of a crazed lunatic. Bravest person I ever met. Don't doubt yourself. You weren't wrong. We were wrong. I'm going to assume that you've heard that the plaintiff, Alejandra Batista, had a horrific night. Luckily, she is now in recovery. The man who abducted her is a psychotic individual who had no affiliation whatsoever with the defendants in this case. Do you understand this? If so, please say yes. Yes, Your Honor. Good. We will now continue with this trial. Monsignor, are you ready with your first witness? Yes, Your Honor. He's already been sworn. Yes, Your Honor. All right, you may proceed. The defense calls Bishop Cardinal Jose Sierra. Bishop Sierra, why are unmarried women baptized in the Roman Catholic Church not qualified to become priests? It has been the teaching of the Roman Catholic Church since the time of Christ that all priests are male. Is there a direct scriptural reference for this teaching? No. Then what is the foundation for this doctrine? Jesus chose only men to be his disciples. We follow the example he set 2,000 years ago. What were the social conditions of a woman in Palestine and Jerusalem during the time of Jesus? It was a male-dominated society. Women were little more than slaves. So he was following the social norms of the times, correct? No. Why not? The priest is the representative of Jesus on earth. Jesus was a man, therefore priests are men. Thank you, Bishop Sierra. No further questions? Your witness, Mr. Riley. Bishop Sierra. <laughs> You said there is no direct scriptural revelation to bar women from the priesthood forever. Is that correct? In the context in which I just stated it, 
Yes, that's correct. So your testimony is that the church relies upon what Jesus didn't do in appointing males only as apostles. Is that correct? Yes. If Jesus was following the tradition of the tribes of Israel, which had an all-male hierarchy, wouldn't it have made sense to continue this all-male hierarchy in the appointing of his apostles? Maybe. Let's talk about some other social norms of the time that maybe Jesus might have followed. All the apostles probably wore beards, right? Yes. But because Jesus didn't appoint any clean-shaven men as apostles, that doesn't mean the church now excludes them from becoming priests, does it? No. Beards were an incidental characteristic the apostles shared. Of course. It would be ridiculous to exclude men without beards from the priesthood. All the first apostles were also Jews, weren't they? Yes. Does the fact that he didn't appoint any Gentiles to be among the first apostles mean that Gentiles are barred forever from the priesthood? No. When Gentiles became a larger part of the church, Gentile men were ordained as priests. I believe you also said that it was a social custom at the time to not appoint women to positions of leadership since they were treated merely better than slaves. Is that correct? In a male-dominated society, yes, that's correct. Now, the custom of treating women just a little better than slaves has changed over time, correct? It most certainly has. Uh, Bishop Sierra, I would like to summarize your testimony so that the jury and I can make sure that we understood you. Jesus had 12 apostles. All wore beards, all were Jews, and all were men. As social customs changed, the church decided that all of those characteristics except one were merely incidental to the priesthood, the male gender being fundamental. Why was the gender of the original apostles the only fundamental characteristic? Weren't they all a result of the social customs of the time in which Jesus lived? No. Monsignor Rizzulli objected to a question that I asked Miss Batista about whether she knew if God wanted her to be a priest. He said that there was no possible way to know what was in God's mind. Yes, that's correct. So I ask you, how can you and the men of the Catholic Church possibly know what's in the mind of God concerning the gender of his priests? The Pope has declared that the priesthood shall be limited to the male gender on the clear example of Jesus. And that, Mr. Riley, is the will of God. So say you and the men of the church. But Jesus never said that. Objection. Mr. Riley is making a speech. Sustained. Uh, Bishop Sarah, you have ordained married males, have you not? I'm not sure what you mean. Have you ordained a married Episcopal priest into the priesthood of the Catholic Church? Yes. Well, don't the qualifications for the priesthood require the candidates to be unmarried? The Pope has offered a special dispensation to ordain married Episcopal priests when circumstances warrant it. The Episcopalian religion also ordains female priests, does it not? Yes, I think they do. Will the Catholic Church ordain a female priest of the Episcopalian religion, married or unmarried? No. So it is your testimony that you and the Pope and the other cardinals will bend the rules to ordain a married male Episcopal priest, but you will not bend those same rules for a woman under the same circumstances just because she is a woman? Your Honor, please. Never mind. I withdraw my question. We already know your answer. No further questions, Your Honor. This court will adjourn until tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. when we will hear closing arguments. Mr. Riley, your closing argument. It is with sadness and outrage for me 
that my client, Alejandra Batista, would be abducted, tortured, and persecuted simply because she had a call to do good in the world. But you, the members of the jury, have an opportunity to right those terrible wrongs and to pave way for something that is right and natural. You've heard testimony that church dogma is infallible. One dogma is that men and women are created equal. Another is that only men can be priests. Those dogmas contradict each other. What are we supposed to believe? I believe the evidence is so clear that the only answer to the question, do the defendants discriminate solely based on gender, is a resounding yes. And to the question, do the defendants have justifiable cause to discriminate, is a resounding no. As a little girl, Alejandra Batista dreamed of being a priest. But the men of the Catholic Church have decided that she can't pursue her dream, that no woman can ever be priest, no matter how qualified or how committed she is to the Catholic Church and to God. Let Alejandra Batista have her dream. Monsignor Renzulo, you may address the jury. Thank you, Your Honor. In order for you to find that my clients discriminate against women, you have to believe that the evidence shows that they act out of disrespect for women and they don't want them to be priests no matter what. But the testimony shows without a shadow of a doubt that the defendants justifiably believe that what they are doing is a direction from the example of Jesus Christ. And so the answer to the first jury question must be no. What was the will of Jesus? Catholic leaders have prayed about it. They've researched it, looked at it in every way possible. And they consistently answer it as Christ would have had them answer it. They do what is required of them by their faith, by their belief. And they cannot do otherwise. The priesthood is reserved for the male gender forever. Therefore, the only answer possible to the second jury question is yes. Thank you. Hey, thanks for coming, man. I know Dunbar flipped if he knew you were anywhere near this case. Five hours is such a long time for such a short trial. Five hours and 36 minutes, but who's counting? Relax, Tony. Just like Ollie says, it's God's will, no matter what the results are. Yeah, thanks. Get back. Good luck, Tommy. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, have you reached a unanimous verdict? We have, Your Honor. Concerning question number one, do you find that the defendants discriminate against women solely because of their gender by excluding them from the seminary in order to study for the Catholic priesthood? Yes or no? Yes, Your Honor. They discriminate against women solely because of their gender. Concerning question number two, do you find that the defendants have a justifiable basis to exclude women from the seminary in order to study for the Catholic priesthood solely because of their gender? Yes or no? No, Your Honor. They do not have a justifiable basis for discrimination. As the jury has found for the plaintiff on those two issues of fact, it is left to me to grant or deny a mandatory injunction that requires the seminary to accept Ms. Batista. However,
Am I going to be a Catholic priest? We won on both counts. The church discriminated against you because you're a woman, and they had no justifiable basis in doing so. Oh my God. So can I start the seminary in the fall? No, Ellie. I'm afraid you can't. Why not? After the verdicts, Judge Watford has to decide whether to grant what's called a mandatory injunction, forcing the church to allow you to enter seminary. I remember. That injunction's only available if you have no other options. If you want to become a priest in a Christian religion, several will accept you. This is Rensuli's question about why I didn't apply to another seminary. Exactly. You have options. So the judge can't force the Catholic Church to accept you. I'm sorry. But we were right. Yeah, I know. We were right. Do you think I can work with students again? I'll see what I can do. Has anything changed? No. But this allows us to fight another day. ordinazione di donne nella Chiesa Cattolica, l'ultima parola è chiara, è stata data da San Giovanni Paolo II e questa rimane.
welcome to a